Hello and welcome to my first Spirit Island video. Today I'm going to be going over the new Nature Incarnate Spirit, Dances Up Earthquakes. So NI has just started releasing, uh, just started shipping out to backers, but it's already on TTS, which is nice. And I've been having a lot of fun playing with this new spirit. Uh, I've developed an opening strategy for it, um, which I call the Turn 4 Earthquake Strategy, uh, that is, I think, very powerful and also pretty fun to play. So. First of all, an overview. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go over the spirit a bit, and then I'll uh, sh show uh, my opening strategy in a bit of detail, and then I'll go through all uh, of the adversaries, each individually, level 6, um, play a game with each of them, and show you how I handle each of the different adversaries. So, first of all, this is a very high complexity spirit, um, which is pretty warranted. Um, it need, it, Good play with the spirit needs uh, a lot of uh, planning for the future. You need to do a lot of setup for future turns, both in when you play your cards, uh, what you know, what cards you play on what turns, what cards you set up to be able to play on what turns, and also uh, setting up uh, presence, placement, and movement on the board, getting uh, yourself to where you want to be, because the spirit has uh, a lot of zero range uh, powers, both in its innates and its uniques. Uh, the entire gimmick of this uh, spirit is that you get to play cards into an impending zone, which means it is not considered in play, but slowly ticks up turn after turn, and eventually, uh, once it reaches its uh, energy cost, um, in number of turns in impending, it'll come out and get played for free, not costing a card play. This lets you set up for one massive turn where you uh, play many cards, activate your innates fully, and decimate the board. So this spirit uh, also uh, starts with six uniques, uh, which is the most that we've seen, uh, tied, for, uh, tied with Finder. Um, it has a lot of offense, which is tied to its big turn and its right innate. Uh, some amount of control, uh, pretty low though. It has a couple. It has like one uh, or two control uniques here. Um, has a bit of fear. I honestly don't know how much I agree with that. I think it, it generate doesn't actually end up generating very much fear until it, like kills everything, which I guess generates a lot of fear. But, like if you look at, on uh, on its uniques, there's only. Uh, two fear among these two, and then three fear in total on its right uh, innate. But you're only ever really going to trigger that right innate fully like once or twice per game. Uh, it has a bit of defense, which is tied to its left innate, which gives you a defend three-ish every turn. And it has a pretty good utility with uh, these two cards, Gift of Seismic Energy and Exaltation of Echoed Steps. Uh, this is, Gift of Seismic Energy is just a huge energy boon. Uh, obviously it costs three, but as uh, but you can put it into impending, which you often will want to do, uh, in order to uh, play it on a later turn for free, and you can get uh, you can give someone up to six energy, which you often will do because you're planning for a large turn. Meanwhile, Exaltation of Echoed Steps is a bit of presence uh, pushing on slow. Uh, both another spirit and you get to do it. And you get to have a bit of control with that too, bringing uh, one uh, explorer town or Dahan. So um, let's look at the spirit board. Uh, so first of all, uh, if you can, see, we can see this is a pretty complex spirit board. There's a token that is unique to dances up earthquake. These quake tokens that only this right innate cares about. Um, the, left, the left innate and some uniques place it. Uh, then we see on these presence tracks, you cap out at four plays, but you have two spots here in the middle, both on the energy track and on the plays track, that give you plus one play, but only for putting cards into impending. Uh, and we have three growth options, each of them do a, 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 quite a lot of different things. The second one is the most standard with adding presence and gaining a power card. The first one lets you reclaim and also either uh, pr place a presence or gain a major power without forgetting. Um, and the third uh, presence placement option lets you place one presence and possibly affect how much your impending cards are going to um, tick up by, as along with a reclaim one. So uh, 
central to this uh, central to the spirit is the impending mechanic, where um, as you can see, you can each turn in, uh, instead of playing a card normally. So normally, I would play this card, spending uh, three energy to play it, right? Uh, to put it into play. But you can instead of putting it into play directly for this turn, spend a card play in order to put it off to the side with any amount of energy. So let's say I had four energy. I can choose to, uh, and let me grab an energy bag here because it'll be useful. Um, I can choose to put it off to the side here in my impending zone, um, spending any amount of energy. Let's say like I spend one energy, put that amount of energy on the card, uh, and then it'll stay there uh, un uh, until uh, on a later turn, it'll get played for free and not costing a card play. So even though we have only four card plays, uh, for only four real card plays maximum, and only two card plays to start, we can uh, consistently hit this uh, right innate fully, which is very important, the seven card plays, by setting up more cards in our impending zone in order to uh, play for free later. Uh, also, so how this impending works is you can see this symbol here, uh, the uh, like one energy on top of like a card with this circle icon uh, that represents impending cards, and this means you put one energy on all impending cards every turn. Uh, so how this works mechanically is, let's say like, one turn I do this, um, so I don't put additional energy on it this turn, only what I pay exactly. But then uh, next turn, after I do growth. When I get the energy and card plays for my presence track, I will also put an energy on every impending card. So let's say uh, these two cards were in impending, this one with one energy and this one with zero. Then uh, I would pick my growth. Let's say I pick uh, my reclaim and like gain a major. Um, and then uh, I would gain my energy. And then I would gain one energy onto each of these. And then now, since this has one energy on it, which is greater than or equal to the amount of energy it costs, uh, I would put into put it into play for free. And then that doesn't cost a card play. I still have my four card plays plus two impending, assuming I all my tracks are empty. Um, additionally, this space over here. Uh, upgrades you from one energy a turn on your impending cards to two energy per, per turn on your impending cards. Notably, this is not optional. Uh, if you have, for example, if you have, for example, this card in, uh, in your impending with uh, one energy on it, uh, and let's like put put a few, put some presents back on these tracks. So if you select growth one and you decide to uh, you decide to remove this presence, you then must put two energy on this impending card, whoops, uh, and then that gets to three, and then so you must play it. All of these are uh, forced. Um, so, wait, how did, okay, I'll, I should fix this later, but anyways, uh, so when you, uh, you can't choose uh, what, how much energy you put on things during uh, growth. You have to always either put on put one on if only this is uncovered, or put two on if this is uncovered. The only way you can affect this is by this growth option. Uh, this lets you fudge with the numbers a bit. So again, if we're in this situation, we can pick growth three, um, place this present somewhere, and then we can say, oh, this card, I don't want it to come off of impending yet. I'm going to decrease the amount of energy I put on it by one. But you can only do this by one for two different cards. Um, either plus or minus one, and so I can say, oh, I need to put two on, but I've decreased it by one, so I only put one on, and that's fine. It won't come off this turn. Or if like it doesn't have any energy on it yet, but you really want it to come down this turn, you could say, oh, okay, I want to put three energy on it, and then it would get played. So that's how impending works. Uh, now let's look at the uniques, or not uniques, innates. So here we have our left innate, uh, this innate will give us Quake tokens and defense. Uh, the first tier, if you have one Earth, which will be very easy as all six of your uniques have uh, an Earth on them, as well as one on this track down here, but the, that one is kind of far off. Um, so it, it cares if you at least have one card in impending, um, then you get to add a Quake token. Uh, in one of your lands. So essentially zero range. 
Uh, so this, this is again what I was talking about earlier. You need to be exactly where you want to be. You need to position yourself very well. Um, and then uh, the second tier, moon plus earth. In one of your lands, you defend one per impending card. So again, uh, this is max three. So if you have at least three impending cards, you'll get a defend three in the land, which is pretty useful. That lines up well against explore a town into uh, most adversaries. Um, it, it has a hard time against Habsburg, but other than that, like it uh, works against Sweden and it works against Russia, yeah, the extra da uh, the main extra damage adversaries. Uh, so yeah, the defend three can help you stay alive. Um, and then the next two tiers are just those two tiers again, except uh, with more element requirements. And this one requires three impending. So three impending cards is really the magic number where uh, if you have three then you uh, and enough elements, you can fully activate your innate for full value, which is two quick, two quick tokens uh, each in your lands and uh, two defend threes each in your lands. And notably, uh, these can all go on the same land, all go in different lands, any combination. Then the right innate here is what we use to win the game. So, uh, and, and, and how we use Quake Tokens. Uh, none, none of our uniques uh, do anything with Quake Tokens except placing them or moving them. The Red Innate is the only payoff we have. Uh, so, if we get two uh, Fire, three Earth, and three cards played. So, this doesn't count in pending cards. So, if I have like this here and these two in play, for example, uh, I only have two cards played. I won't be hitting this uh, Innate. I think currently TTS doesn't properly capture this yeah it's not programmed to detect that you only have two cards in play um, so you'll have to watch out for that but uh, it's very important to count the number of cards in play here uh, so as long as you have two fire three earth three uh, cards in play you get to at range zero deal two damage per quake tokens to buildings only so like if you have two quake tokens you could kill two towns or like one city if you have one quake token you can just kill a town um, which is, isn't very exciting. Um, next, if you get to uh, one more fire, one more earth, and two more cards played, then you get one fear, and then in any number of lands with quake tokens, you do two damage per quake token to buildings only, then remove one uh, quake token. So basically you're getting the first tier, except on every single land, or as many as you want, uh, with quake tokens. And then after that you remove a bunch of quake tokens, one from each land affected. Um, this notably, you can also choose the uh, land that you chose for the first tier. So you can do two, uh, for example, if you have uh, a land with two quake tokens and then a land with one quake token, and let's say you're on this land, you can say, uh, okay, this land will uh, get uh, four damage to buildings, and then this again, this land will get four damage to buildings, and this land will get two damage to buildings, and then you remove one quake token from each. And then finally, the last tier, uh, which truly starts uh, to actually decimate the board, uh, is one more fire, one more earth again, and seven cards played. Um, that is a lot of cards. Notably, we cap out at four, so to reach these five cards and seven cards thresholds, we will need to have cards come off in pending, or possibly have some like fractured or <laughs> um, spur nonsense going on. But... Then uh, in uh, this this tier, in each uh, land where you remove the quake token, um, so that's from the second tier. So every land affected, you do one damage to each invader, and this is really really powerful. What it means is that one uh, quake token can, for example, um, kill. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, yeah. Let, let's say we have like. Uh, like a bunch of explorers, uh, a couple towns, and a couple cities in the land. If we if we have uh, if we only have the first two tiers, then we would need like four, uh, or no, if we would need five quake tokens here to kill all the buildings in this land because there is six plus another four is ten health of buildings here, um, with only the first tier. But if we have uh, if we have the full tier, then we can kill uh, finish this land off completely with just three quake tokens because um, we would deal uh, two damage to each of these and then one damage to each of the towns, um, leaving everything in this land at one health. Uh, so that's six damage total for the three quake tokens, and then everything would take one damage, finishing everything off. 
So with that uh, final tier of the innate, you can usually set up uh, huge earthquakes that kill basically the entire board. So um, how do we set this up? Well, uh, we'll need to put, up, uh, put a lot of cards into impending. Um, and that gets towards uh, the opening I've developed. Um, and I'll briefly go over it here before I jump into an actual game. But uh, let's see, let's reset this. So turn one, uh, as you can see here, we have six cards, right? Uh, and we want to get seven cards in play. And uh, it, by turn, uh, the fastest you can get seven cards in play, assuming like solo or like no help from other, uh, from like any random major powers or uh, other players. Uh, for example, transformative sacrifice is a way to uh, get to seven cards fairly easily. But uh, look, assuming that we don't have that, uh, we can't get to this three card plays by turn four, but there is still a way to get to seven cards in play on turn four. Uh, so this is how. Um, so uh, since we need two cards, uh, we can only play two cards on that turn for real, uh, we'll need five cards in impending. So to, max, uh, to get there as quickly as possible, turn one, I'm going to G2, uh, gain a minor, uh, and then place this presence on the board. Okay, this I'm going to use the spirit marker as uh, uh, representing what's on the board. So I'm going to pick a minor. For now, I'm not going to talk about like exactly what kinds of cards I want to draft, um, though there are definitely um, better cards and worse cards for this strategy. Um, so yeah, I will put two cards into impending, and notably that costs both of my card plays. I won't put any energy on them, and I'll play zero cards for real. So it might seem strange to not act, want to activate my uh, left innate to add quake tokens because like I, I, the whole thing I'm setting up for is a big earthquake. But I need to be, I need to put two cards into impending uh, one of the early turns, skipping card plays. And turn one is the best turn to do that because that's when you don't have any defense. It also lines up very well with these two uniques that both cost three. Uh, if you put them into impending here, they'll get one energy on turn two, second energy on turn three, and turn four, they get the third energy and come off impending straight into play. So these are very well timed um, if uh, to put both into impending on turn one. So I'll get to place a presence, I'll get to move a presence, and I'll get to do nothing else this turn. Um, uh, nothing in fast, nothing in slow, just pass the turn. Okay, then turn two, I will again gain a minor power card. Uh, and I'll just pick one random one of these. Um, and I'll again grow from top track. I think you can go from grow from bottom track, but notably this move one presence uh, right here is extremely important for this strategy. Uh, like I said, you need to be very cognizant of where your presence is placed each turn in order to uh, affect the right things. Uh, and notably, uh, hitting this the first two tiers of this left innate, both placing quick tokens and defending, uh, you can only do those in your lands. So you need to be very mobile. You want to uh, place quick tokens where there's a lot of buildings and then walk out um, in order to uh, escape the ravage. Um, so this present, this presence movement, I've uh, I've found very very helpful, and then uh, I also want to rush down to this plus one play very quick, and so I can get the requisite five cards in my impending zone. Uh, so that's why I go full top track for the first few turns. So then now uh, I want to play, um, I want to put one card into impending, which is this card, because again, th uh, this card lines up very well. Uh, uh, put into impending this turn with zero energy. So we're, we're gaining one energy onto each of these. Then uh, similarly, now we can see everything is two off, which is the exact right timing for coming down on turn four. Um, and then I will want to play one card, ideally with Earth and Moon, uh, so I can hit both of the um, thresholds for my first innate. So I play one card, put one into impending. That's my two plays for the turn. And I hit Earth, Moon. Uh, I'll generally want to play one of my uniques, though sometimes I'll play a minor power if it has uh, a good effect or good elements or both. Um, then uh, on the fast phase, you will uh, get a one Quake token in one, one of your lands and a defend three in one of your lands. Whoops. Uh, oh, I should uh, probably for now turn that off. 
yeah, like I said, while I'm trying to, whoops, huh, don't know why three caused that to go into my hand, but anyways, uh, I'll have a defend three somewhere on the island, um, on the, one of my lands, and a quick token in one of my lands, and a presence place, placement at one rage, and a move. Uh, then I will also, uh, with this card, uh, since I have one card in play and three cards in pending, uh, I get the full effect, which is one fear, and add another quake token. So I now I have two quake tokens. Uh, then I'll do no uh, nothing on slow. Hopefully the defend three uh, helps keep me afloat, and time passes. Then next turn, uh, turn this is turn three. I will gain a major this time, um, forgetting this card. Uh, whichever card I played on turn one doesn't have to be this card exactly. Uh, oh, notably, I will want to play this either turn two or turn three because it adds a quake token. Uh, and turn four it doesn't add a quake token because I'm going to have seven cards in play. So I will not have at least as many impending cards as power cards in play. Anyway, so I will, I'll want to gain that major, forgetting whichever card I played on turn one. Um, then I'll. Uh, place from top track again to get this extra card play, which is very important. Um, then all of these will take up by one, so now I'm at two, two, and one on these. All of them are one off, set to come off, come off of impending next turn. Um, and then uh, I will again uh, play a card and put two cards into impending. Uh, notably, this time, uh, so if I put a minor into impending since all minors cost zero or one, um, It'll come off next turn uh, for sure, and if I put a major into impending, I want to uh, I want to pay um, energy such that it is x minus one, where x is its cost, so that it's going to come off next turn. X minus one energy. Um, alternatively, I can play the major this turn and put another minor or unique into impending. I could also like put another unique into impending. It all depends on what the board looks like. But this is generally what I will want to do, because this major is going to be very easily thresholded, as we'll see. So uh, with that done, um, I'll get another Quake token and another Defend 3. Uh, I, and, and again, I'll have a Presence placement and a Presence movement. Um, and hopefully that should still keep me afloat a bit. Uh, this, this opening does tend to take a lot of light. Uh, to scale um, in order to get reach the turn four cool earthquake, uh, but uh, because you only get to play one card each turn and it's likely not going to be very impactful for the first three turns or or zero cards even on turn one. Yeah, so then I'll do whatever this card does on slow, um, and then time passes. So this is the cool turn. Uh, I will again take G two. I will gain a major. Uh, Take whatever. Probably not actually that card if I'm act if I'm playing a real game. Um, <laughs> then I'll gain one energy on each of these, which will cause all of them to go into impending. Notably, um, sometimes if this major here is too expensive, I try to take cheap, effective majors. But if there's none available, I might need to take an expensive one. Um, if that's the case, then you can take G3 here instead of a G2. Uh, so I, ideally, you want to gain a major and forget this and be able to play two majors this turn. But sometimes, you instead of gaining this major, you will just reclaim and uh, have this uh, unique or minor available instead if this major takes too much energy. Uh, this also lets you put it, uh, have it be X minus 2 because you can uh, add an additional energy to it if you can't fit it in your, uh, if you can't have x minus 1 be less than or equal to 3. So if you get a 5 cost, you can still put it into impending, you just need to uh, click this, um, uh, cl click this growth option instead. So uh, this turn, all of these will come off of impending, uh, so we will have 5 cards in play, then we will play 2 more cards per turn, and then put 1 card into impending. So what this will let us do, uh, oh, and uh, I can't click pay because I put these into play, but uh, I will only have to play, pay zero plus whatever this major costs. But uh, uh, what this will do uh, is it'll let us, even though we fully activated our uh, left innate, since we only have one impending card, we only get to add one quake token on fast. 
from our left innate, and we get two different defend ones in one of our lands. This usually will try to add up to a defend two. But we also, from this card, we will get a, uh, another Quake token and also a Ravager Skip. From this card, we will give six energy out to the team or in solo three to ourselves. And then we have two majors uh, that are very likely to be thresholded because as you can see, uh, just from these uniques, not even counting uh, this minor and these two majors played, uh, we have one at least one element of every uh, at least one of every single element, along with two moon, three air, uh, fire, and four earth. Uh, so we are very likely to be able to threshold these majors, and we can draft around. Uh, we, we can affect the draft a bit and play order of our cards a bit in order to make sure that we do. Uh, notably, you can uh, threshold unlock the gates as well with uh, this strategy. Uh, and then whether we take from top or bottom really depends on how energy constrained we are. Generally, if I have enough energy to do it, like I don't need this third energy, I like to take from the bottom just because the Dahan movement can be nice. And also I like to get to this uh, second uh, plus one card play before like going to this two energy per turn on impending cards. But that really depends on the situation as well. So we get to place a presence, we get to move a presence, we place a quake token, we place another quake token. Uh, so we have five total quake tokens now. Um, and then on slow, we get to fully activate our innate as long as we have one fire and one earth. It's very important that within these drafted cards, we have at least one fire and at least one earth uh, so that we can activate this innate. And then this innate should decimate everything. So that's basically the opening. Um, after this, usually, usually there's at most a few stragglers left on board. Against England 6, the game will go on a lot longer, but most other adversaries will just uh, uh, completely die to this opening on turn 4, as long as you can survive. So uh, now let's get into some games.